When you first launch WSFTP, you will most likely be asked to configure a connection using the connection wizard. I'm going to go ahead and select the cancel button at this time because I want to be able to show you how to access this on a normal basis. To access the connection wizard, you'll need to go to the connections menu option and select new connection. Here you can create a name for your site, for example, my example website. We'll hit the next button. We are being asked what type of connection this is and you have various options including um, HTTP, SFTP, but of course we'll go ahead and leave it as a regular FTP connection. We'll select the next button to continue. On the next screen, we are asked for a server address. So I'm going to enter my domain name. If your domain name is not yet configured with your hosting account, you can also use your IP address. Let's go ahead and press the next button to continue. On this screen, we will need to enter our username and password. Once we have done that, we'll click the next button again. Okay, at this time we are connected. On the left hand side we can see the files that are available on my local computer and on the right hand side we can see all the files that are on our remote server. The files that belong to our website go inside of the public underscore HTML folder. So any file that you want to make available publicly online will need to go into this folder. WSFTP also has a connection manager and you can find it under connections, site manager. And what this does is that it allows you to set up multiple websites. For example, we have already configured our first connection here and it's already being listed under the sites folder. We can organize our various connections based on whatever criteria we want. For example, clients. personal and uh, maybe a folder for servers that belong to friends of ours you can take any connection and drag it from one folder to another simply by dragging and dropping when you do this it will ask you to confirm whether this is an operation you want to do or not We'll select yes this time to see what happens. Obviously this connection is not one of our clients. We'll go ahead and move this one to our personal folder. We'll select yes again. So let's go ahead and establish another connection using the site manager. Here we will press the create site button and once again we are prompted with the connection wizard. We'll give this new connection a name. Select next, leave it as FTP and press the next button. The server address will be the server address for the new server and we'll press the next button again. We'll type in the new connection details. And press the next button to continue. When we have done that, the site will automatically connect to our client's website. Now the beautiful thing about WSFTP is that it also has tabs and these tabs will allow you to connect to multiple websites at once. So now that we have multiple websites configured inside of WSFTP, let's go ahead and uh, select under the connect button, the little pull down menu. We can see the different folders that we've created here. We have two sites listed under the personal folder. We have my client's website and my example website. Let's select the my client's website now. It automatically connects and now I can switch between both servers using tabs. Let's go ahead and go back into the site manager. 
make sure that our client's website is properly placed inside of the client's folder. Select yes. And there you have it. Congratulations, you now know how to configure WSFTP.